Have you ever wondered what happens when engineers decide that 16 cylinders just isn't enough? From a diesel that needs 675 liters of oil, just for lubrication to engines that power entire cities, these 10 V20 giants are engineering insanity. Detroit Diesel's 20V149 is the wild card of the V20 world. It's a two-stroke diesel, medium speed, blower scavenged and turbocharged, built for brutal duty where power density and serviceability matter more than sipping fuel. Power generation and off-highway operators loved that it could be configured for serious output with stacked boosting and cooling hardware, yet still be torn down by techs who knew Detroit power assemblies. In high output variants, you'll see dual turbochargers, three dedicated blowers, and intercooling laid out like a plumbing maze. That layout said everything. The contrast really made it stand out. Run it in short, hard bursts, and it shined like nothing else. Try to make it a constant duty prime mover without the right setup, and it punished you with fuel burn and heat that would make you wince. Its two stroke cadence is unmistakable and the throttle response is a genuine party trick when the air system is dialed in right. Every extra stage of air and cooling buys you power and every stage adds parts, heat paths, and losses that you must manage carefully. The 20V149 is the purest expression of that deal. It's an overbuilt hot rod two-stroke for large generator sets and off-highway machines. At sea, it usually appears as a gen set, but was also occasionally used for main propulsion in tugs and workboats. It isn't a quiet, fuel-efficient, medium-speed plant engine built for 24-7 baseload. This is the 2645 a two-stroke V20 from EMD's 645 family. It's medium speed with a gear-assisted turbo atop a scavenging blower. Railroads bought it for one reason, headline horsepower in a single unit. In the SD45, it promised 3,600 horsepower and the idea that you could haul the same tonnage with fewer locomotives and one crew. The engine itself could make the power without question, the real question was how much of that power a DC traction locomotive could put to the rail in real weather on real grades. Mechanically, the long V20 layout pushed torsion and block stresses harder than the 16-cylinder baseline. Shops saw more attention needed on bearings, alignment, and heat margins. Crews learned to protect the engine under heavy load and high temperature. But the bigger story lived outside the block. With DC traction, Adhesion protection often pulled power back to save the motors. On paper, the SD45 had the edge. On wet rail or steep territory, that edge shrank fast. Railroads adapted to reality. Many SD45s with the 2645 were re-rated to roughly 3,000 horsepower with governor and rack settings. In daily work that made them, effectively, expensive SD40s. Others moved to flatter routes where peak horsepower mattered less than steady pull. Brochure horsepower sold locomotives, but tractive effort, uptime, and cost per ton mile kept them on the roster. The 2645 made the case for power. The system around it decided how much that power mattered. The 2710 arrived to fix what the 2645 could not, then met a different kind of problem. It's a two-stroke diesel V20, medium speed and turbocharged, with more displacement per cylinder than the 645. The engine itself is a stronger two-stroke with improved breathing and a stiffer crankcase over the 645 lineage. In SD80 Max service, AC traction finally kept big horsepower hooked at low speed and on bad rail. That's the physics advantage the SD45 never got. In the cab, crews felt steadier launches because inverters trimmed torque at the slipping axle instead of yanking power across the whole unit. 
In the shop, the 710 family generally behaved better than the old 645 when you kept it in spec. On paper, that should have been the comeback for the V20 in heavy freight, but the market said otherwise. A small pool of V20 locomotives means separate parts, training, and procedures. Railroads realized that a 16-cylinder AC unit around 43 to 4,400 horsepower could do almost all of the same jobs with better commonality and lower risk. The 2710 solved physics better than its predecessor. However, it could not solve fleet math. That's the hook. You finally get to use all that power. However, the business case still favored fewer cylinders, standardized platforms, and large, identical orders. While the engine's power was impressive, uptime and having readily available parts were ultimately what paid the bills. This MTU is a four-stroke diesel V20, high-speed and turbocharged, sized for compact engine rooms and modular power packages. Think ferries, big yachts, high-demand workboats, and mobile gensets. The pitch is compact size for the output, fast response, and electronics that keep transients clean. Compared with medium-speed engines, a 20-cylinder Series 4000 can be lighter per kilowatt and easier to fit into cramped engine rooms, which is why operators chose it when weight and space mattered. The trade-off was clear. High-speed engines chase specific output and quick throttle, but they need disciplined maintenance and clean fuel to stay happy. Duty cycle mattered. Run a high-speed V20 at constant high load without headroom, and you buy heat and parts. Run it where it can stretch its legs with room to cool and it delivers. It was about choosing the right tool for the job. A Series 4000 V20 can make serious power in a compact footprint, and it can do it with modern common rail injection and tight control over emissions hardware. It's not the right answer for every plant or ship. It is the right answer when you need speed, weight savings, and a package that fits where a medium speed block simply will not. Step up from the 4000 and you hit the big marine classes. The 20V1163 and the 20V8000 are four-stroke diesel V20s, high speed and turbocharged. Both live in higher speed commercial craft and naval platforms where acceleration, top speed and long legs at sea justify the size and cost. These engines are about pushing large hulls fast, then living with the fuel and maintenance math that comes with that choice. The point was scale, you're talking about V20s that move a lot of air and fuel, manage a lot of heat, and carry emissions hardware that must work in salt, air, and vibration. The packaging is tight, the pipework is dense, and the systems are integrated so the crew can monitor and protect the plant without babysitting every gauge. When they run inside their envelope, the payoff is real. You get ships that sprint, hold schedule, and recover speed after turns, or rough water without drama. This is why these V-20s lived at sea, not on freight rail. Marine duty cycles let large engines settle into extended load bands with steady cooling water and room for a big auxiliaries. Rail wants all-weather starts, interchangeability, and platform commonality. The same cylinder count solves different problems in different worlds. The C17520 is a high-speed, four-stroke diesel V20 with four turbochargers and air-to-water intercooling. It earns its living in ultra-class mining trucks and in large standby or prime power. In mining, the use case is clear. You have a truck that moves more than 1,000 tons per hour across a pit, climbs grades loaded, descends empty, and does it in heat, dust, and shock that would kill lesser machines. The C17520 brings four turbochargers and serious intercooling to keep charge air dense, and the package is built for field service with big access points and long intervals. 
The drivetrain choice was important. Mining trucks can run mechanical or diesel electric. The C-17520 showed why a mechanical path could still make sense in certain fleets, and how control systems make that survivable on brutal terrain. Uptime was the other factor. A truck that sits is a mine that loses money. The V-20 has to start, run, cool, and survive while techs swap filters and check fluids in dust storms. In power applications, the same block leans on steady running and fuel quality. It's not a small engine, it's a known engine. When a site needs a big V-20 that techs can reach and overhaul on location, this family fits. It was practical, not brochure glitter. It's an engine that pays rent by doing the most boring thing well, hour after hour. The Vartsila 20V32 is a four-stroke diesel V20, turbocharged medium speed, that wins when you stack engines instead of buying one giant prime mover. Think ferries, cruise ships, and modular power plants. Operators bolt several identical 20V32s in a row, then bring engines online or offline to match the load. That keeps each engine in an efficient band, cuts fuel penalties at light demand, and gives you redundancy. Lose one set and you still sail or still keep the lights on. This was a different way to think about power. Instead of one big prime mover pulling a train, you have a team of V20s sharing the work. The controls balance load, the engines start fast for their size, and maintenance can be staged without shutting a whole ship or plant down. It was a reliability play and an economics play. Emissions and noise were key as well. Medium speed engines like the 20V32 can meet tight port rules with after treatment and careful combustion control. And they do it at a cadence that's easier on structures and crew. The sound is lower and slower than a high speed block, and the difference was clear. It proved a turbine didn't make sense thanks to better part load efficiency and a modular layout. The MAN20V2833D STC was a medium speed, four stroke V20 that used sequential turbo control to phase and boost its load and RPM rows. With a 280mm bore and 330mm stroke, the V20 version delivered about 91 kilowatts at 1000 RPM in commercial trim and up to 10,000 kilowatts at 1032 RPM for naval ratings, which put it near the top of the 1000 RPM class. It fit fast ferries, offshore patrol vessels, and naval craft that needed hard acceleration, long patrol endurance, and low acoustic and thermal signatures. The package stayed compact for its output and paired MAN-TCA series turbochargers with Sako Sone controls, which managed fuel, air, and protection logic as one system. That allowed clean low-load running without the white smoke that older high-output sets produced, while keeping transients crisp for harbor sprints and sea state hits. The STC layout gave strong torque off the bottom and clean breathing at the top so the engine held power across a wide band without drowning itself in soot during step changes. High power to weight helped designers keep the machinery spaces tight, and the family scaled across V12, 16, and 20 blocks for common parts and training. That mix of response, density, and endurance explained why the type showed up in both single and combined plant installations such as Kodad, Kodog, and Kodag. The 20V175D is MAN's newer high-speed four-stroke V20 with common rail injection and turbocharging, aimed at ferries, patrol craft, and supply vessels that need a lot of power in a tight footprint, with current emissions hardware built in. The selling points are compact size for output, common rail injection for precise fueling, and charge air systems that hold density across a wide band. Depending on the spec, you'll see EGR, SCR, or both, Package so the engine room doesn't turn into a chemistry set. It was the modern answer to keeping V20 power relevant under new rules. The block and heads are designed to live with higher in-cylinder pressures and tighter temperature control. The electronics protect the engine and the after-treatment without constant crew intervention. 
The goal is repeatable power and clean exhaust, not brochure peaks. Controls and combustion strategy close the gap between big engine and smart engine. The 20V175D shows what that looks like in 2020's packaging. It's not flashy for the sake of being flashy. It's packaged for uptime, compliance, and ease of installation. That contrasted with older V20s that chased power first and made the rest of the system cope. The Genbacher J920 is a four-stroke gas V20, high speed in the 10 megawatt class per unit. Two-stage turbocharging with intercooling and tight controls let it start fast, follow load, and hold high efficiency in combined heat and power. Pre-chamber ignition and cylinder-by-cylinder -cylinder monitoring kept combustion stable on lean mixtures which helped with low NOx and clean exhaust. The package was modular, so installation and major service stayed predictable. Utilities use sets like this to balance renewables, ride through peaks, and harvest heat for district loops or process steam. It handled black starts, islanded operation, and quick synchronizing, which was why it replaced turbines in plants that needed rapid ramps and strong part load numbers. It summed up engines versus turbines in one package. Engines won on fast starts and part load efficiency. Turbines won at huge, steady loads with clean fuel and space. It paired with the MWM TCG 3020V20. This was a four-stroke gas V20 built for landfill gas, digester gas, and other variable fuels. A robust gas mixing train, knock control, and lambda management kept it running when methane quality drifted. Operators containerized the set with jacket water and exhaust heat recovery to get both electricity and usable thermal output, and added oxidation catalysts where permits required it. Long service intervals, remote monitoring, and stable CHP economics made the numbers work. The story was simple. Trash became gas, gas became electricity and hot water, and a V20 sat at the center turning chaos into kilowatts.